favorite disease. Favorite disease. <laughs> um, oh gosh, this is a tough one because you want something benign, mm. so it doesn't cause too much trouble for the patient. You want some, something that's easily curable. Like I recently made a video where I got all of the big medical YouTubers into one single video and I asked them a few of the same questions. In this video, I'm going to be showing you what they said was their favourite diseases. Let's get into it. Favourite disease? I kind of like HIV. Okay, good. I mean, that's a niche one and one I've not heard before, but I love it. it, it any justification for that one? Yeah. I I think having a background in microbiology, I'm going to go for an infectious disease. Does that, does that still count? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it, yeah. man. Um, part of the reason I liked microbiology so much was I found it very interesting how smart the microbes are sort of at invading our bodies and taking advantage of them. Mm. And I think a good example of that is um, uh, one of the intestinal parasites or nematodes. I'm not sure what the perfectly correct uh, thing is for them. Uh, there, There's one called... Ang Ankylostoma duodenale or something along those lines and it enters the body through the sole of your foot when you're walking barefoot on like a beach or on soil or something like that and it travels up to the lungs climbs up the bronchial tree then gets coughed up by the host into the esophagus goes down into the stomach and then into the intestines where it eventually lives starts taking up all your nutrients and your blood uh, and causes all kinds of problems but yeah i think that's probably <laughs> I, I, love microbe. That, I love that you've picked literally like one of the nastiest things that anyone could pick <laughs> I, I i don't like it for the bad things it does to us as humans but i think it's just really clever and a smart evolutionary concept um, concept yeah exactly. you appreciate how 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 smart that microbe is i like that what is your favorite disease or condition if you're going to pick just one what would it be and why well you know heart disease keeps me in work but i'd say that the ones with the best names uh, are probably my favorite uh, so it would be narrowed down to ondine's curse mm. uh, a jumping frenchman of maine or um exploding head syndrome okay uh, those, are, those are some classic names <laughs> what's what, what's exploding head syndrome it's um uh, I think it's a sort of neuropsychiatric condition. I don't really know the details about it, but um, which uh, presents as, as severe headaches, uh, I think. But it's it's got some sort of psychiatric element to it. So it's not like a cluster headache. It's it's something else. I, forget, I guess I should learn what it is if I'm going to say it's my favourite. But uh, I just like the sound of it. <laughs> I know. I feel like enjoying the sound of it is good. It's, it's, that's good enough. The other one I used to like in cardiology was broken heart syndrome as well, which. Which you get. Well, I strongly object to anybody using that name. Okay. Because uh, the original name, Takatsubo Cardiomyopathy, is way better. Yeah. Because that means octopus pot uh, <laughs> in Japanese. Uh, because the way that the heart pumps when mm. you get Takatsubo looks like an octopus trap in traditional Japanese fishing. That's, so that that's, name is way better. That's such an interesting and niche piece of knowledge. So I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> You've shared that. Favourite disease? Oh my god. Um, uh, oh, I'm just going to say like endometriosis. That's the first one that like comes to my mind. Yeah. What's the reason for that? I just, I like like, I think that's my favourite block in medical school was like repro. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just think it's a really interesting one. Um, and lots, I know lots of people who have it, so I guess that pro probably like sparked my interest. So I just, when it when it came up in medical school, I found it quite interesting. <laughs> I think it's a particularly tough one to live with as well, isn't it? And yeah. And the the treatment options are just they're not great either, are they? Yeah. Um, in terms of having laparoscopy and things like that. So I think I'm pretty sure there's like statistics about it being really hard to get diagnosed as well for a lot of people. Ooh, so when you asked me this on Instagram, it took me a while and I was thinking, what, <laughs> what is my favourite disease? There's so many. Um, I think the main one would be probably things to do with like mental health. So I think uh, like treatment resistance, uh, depression or things like uh, schizophrenia. When it comes uh, to things like schizophrenia, bipolar, all of these disorders, you know, it's, we don't really know what the cause is, you know, like it's multifactorial. It's, you know, a lot to do with genetics, but also a lot to do with, with the environment. And I'm kind of more interested with the environmental causes more. I remember like one day when I was in my second year, I saw a patient who, um, 
I think he had bipolar or something, something of the sorts, but he had something like bipolar. And um, he, he told me that he was developing these kind of second personalities to, to deal with all, everything he's going through in his life. Um, and it was really interesting to think, you know, when someone's going through all this stress, maybe going into, you know, getting these medical conditions like depression or schizophrenia, or maybe ways that their brain like copes with the damage that's happening. And it's really interesting to think, you know, you know what is that environmental cause that's, that's, that's leading to all of these medical um, and mental health conditions? I also think it's one area of medicine where we probably don't know everything yet. And then in the next hundred, hundred years, things are going to change before <clears throat> the, like the theory of microbes, we didn't know bacteria, that in two right. years, there's something else that we didn't know about that's, that's contributing to this a bit. Favorite disease. Favorite disease. <laughs> um, Oh gosh, this is a tough one because you want something benign, mm. so it doesn't cause too much trouble for the patient. You want some, something that's easily curable as well, don't you? <laughs> um, uh, I, I've got one actually. You know, being on ear, nose, and throat, I, th I think it'll have to be benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, which is essentially where the crystals in your um, ear are misplaced and they cause you excruciating horrible vertigo where you're the room is spinning and the patients are basically basically incapacitated um it's benign it doesn't have any sort of long-term implications and it's the most satisfying thing to fix because you have this patient that is completely you know bed bound they can't move every time they move they they go on a spin and then you with your the magic of your hands and all of your brain are able to reposition those crystals and render them back to normal so that's got to be my favorite, I think. Honestly, I, I, you know what? Magic is exactly the word that I would have used as well. Is that you're talking about repositioning some crystals and fixing a patient. <laughs> like, that is, that is literally magic. I made it up. I made it up. It doesn't exist. I've just said uh, <laughs> these and, crystals. And, and also, the maneuver that you use to reposition those crystals, so like the Epley maneuver, just feels so random as well, doesn't it? It's like, move it here, move it there, move it here. Oh, you're fixed. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. It's as if someone made it up, but somehow yeah. it seems to work. <laughs> also, how, how, how many times must they have tested different manoeuvres to find out that this was the way? And how it's, many it's of the like, bits? Go on. It's like baking though, isn't it? Like, it, who, who is it that decided eggs and milk and flour and then put it in it like under a heat source would make something so incredible? Someone must have got it wrong for a very long time. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. As always, if you're new to the team, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can join us. And as always, drop the video a like. Let me know what you thought in the comments and I'll see you next week.